Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we will talk about triangles and uh, trigonometry of right triangles. Um, in the uh, previous lectures, I I did two things actually. First, I explained um, what's the roots of trigonometry, and the roots are in the triangles, primarily in the right triangles, and basically defined uh, functions of angles, of acute angles, as ratio between an opposite catheters of the right triangle with this acute angle, uh, two hypotenuse, that's the sine, um, and the cosine is a uh, ratio of adjacent catheters to the hypotenuse. And then all other functions also were defined this way. Now, these definitions were um, fine for acute angles, but obviously they were not good for any angle. And then I expanded the definitions using the unit circle, the one which has the radius 1 and the center in the center of coordinates, and just said that uh, an abscissa of this angle is basically, it's a cosine, and ordinate is a sine of this angle, regardless of what the angle is. It can be acute or it can be something like this, for instance, in which case this is the point and it also has its, also its own x and y coordinates and the x coordinate will be a cosine of this angle and y coordinate will be assigned to this angle. Now, now we are back to right triangles, in which case I can actually use um, both definitions, but the first one, which was actually defined for right triangles, is uh, obviously much more appropriate. And the equivalence of these two definitions we did discuss in the previous lectures. All right, so I will, again, go back to the original uh, definition of the triangle uh, of uh, trigonometric functions for right triangles as ratio between the catheters uh, and hypotenuse and, and catheter between themselves. Okay, so that being said, let's just consider that we have a right triangle. I will use capital Latin letters for vertices, I will use the corresponding Greek letters for angles, ninety degree is pi over two in radians, and obviously both alpha and beta are acute and obviously their sum is also 90 degree sum of these two acute angles in the right triangle so all these properties are known properties of right triangles so I'm not going to prove anything uh, if you need the proof uh, you can find it in geometry part of this course. Now, the sides, I will use lowercase legend letters. Across the A, I will use A lowercase. Across the B, I will use B lowercase, uh, lowercase, and C. Now, what do we know about this particular triangle besides this? Well, we also know the Pythagorean theorem. Right? So, that's about it about the triangle. Now about trigonometry. Definition says that sine of alpha is equal to opposite catheters to hypotenuse. That's the definition. 
And again, this definition is completely in correspondence with the definition of the function sine or any other functions, which I did using the unit circle. But this definition is true for acute angles only. That definition for um, where we're using the unit circle is good for uh, any kind of angle. But for acute angles, they are the same. So, cosine is b over c. So, these are two major functions. The third function, which is important but not as major, uh, tangent is a over b, opposite uh, towards adjacent. Now, then there are three other functions which are used less than these. Cotangent is B over, uh, B over A of this angle. And uh, two more functions. Second is C over B. And cosecant is C over A. Now, I have to tell right up front that sometimes tangent is abbreviated like TG, not as TAN. And cosecant sometimes is cosecant. It depends, but different authors prefer different things, and different countries actually prefer different abbreviations. These, by the way, are more um, used in, uh, in Europe. In America, these are more used. I'll use these ones. Doesn't really matter. OK, so these can be considered just as a definition. There is nothing to prove uh, here. However, what immediately follows from here that um, these two major functions actually are sufficient to derive anything else. Ten, tangent is, obviously, sine over cosine. Right? A over C divided by B over C. C would be reduced, <coughs> so it would be B over A. <coughs> now, this is obviously an inverse. Cosine over sine. Now, this is obviously 1 over cosine. And this is 1 over sine. So as you see, these functions do play the major role. And quite frankly, in all the practical implementations and practical calculations, uh, it's usually these two functions which are really participating, and everything else usually derives. Well, in many cases, tangent also participates, but that's about it. Um, it, it cotangent second and cosecant are very rarely used, but it doesn't really matter. Um, what, what does matter is that these can be derived, and basically that's it. So we will concentrate on these functions, and maybe sometimes on tangent, as more frequently used. Now, what follows from here is, don't need this anymore, what follows from here is, now, you remember that these functions are functions of angle only, which means if you will take any other right triangle with the same angles alpha and beta, then the ratios will be exactly the same which means that we can just tabulate the values of these functions, actually only these two functions, uh, for any angle, whatever we want, and then just use these tables or these pre-calculated values which are already built into our calculators and computers. We can use them to resolve uh, certain uh, right triangles in terms of if you have one side, how to find another side? Well, here is how. I mean, it just directly follows from these formulas. 
Now, from this formula, for instance, what do we have? A is equal to C times sine alpha. So if you have a hypotenuse and an angle, then you can get a casuatus. Or you can get another casuatus. It's equal to cosine. Similarly, how to find hypotenuse, for instance? Well, it's A divided by sine alpha, or B divided by cosine alpha. So basically, any kind of manipulation with these formulas, you can resolve one over another if you know the uh, Oh, I, I didn't really mention how to resolve A if you know B. Well, that's from tangent, right? So A is equal to B times tangent of from here. So in any case, if you have an angle of a right triangle, an acute angle, I mean, obviously, and one side, you can, using trigonometric functions, uh, uh, determine the value of uh, the lengths of another side. Either it's another casuatus or it's a hypotenuse, whatever it is. All right, so this is how we will use these trigonometric functions in practical uh, implementation of whatever the problem is. Okay, here is a very important um, quality. Now, we know that sine of alpha is an opposite casuatus um, over hypotenuse. Now, what's a sine of beta? Well, same thing. Opposite casuatus, which is beta, which is B, over hypotenuse. And cosine beta is adjacent to hypotenuse. Basically, that's all you have to remember. I mean, if there is anything to remember about trigonometry, it's just the definition that the sine is opposite towards hypotenuse and cosine is adjacent to the angle over hypotenuse. That's basically it. Everything else is following logically. But one of the things which follows quite logically is this. Compare this, B over C, and this. So what it means is sine A is equal to cosine beta and cosine alpha is equal to sine beta. This is the same as this and this is the same as this. So if two angles complement each other to 90 degrees, like in this case, two acute angles complement each other to 90 degrees, then the sine of one is equal to cosine of another. And cosine of first is equal to sine of another. That's very important. Therefore, for instance, sine of 40 degree is equal to cosine of 50 degree. Because 40 and 50 is 90. OK? So that's very important quality which you have to remember. And the only thing which remains actually for me to discuss in this lecture is just to find what the values of sine and cosine for a few simple cases of right triangles. And there are actually only two simple cases of right triangles. Everything else is much more complicated. The first simple case is the right triangle with 45 degrees. This is 45 degree, and this is 45 degree. Well, what it means is, as you know, this is 
uh, uh, this is a square actually. If I will just flip this particular uh, triangle, because if I will flip it, it will be exactly the same triangle, which means it's also 45 degrees. And this is 45 degrees. So it's 90, and this is 90. So it's a rectangle, right? Uh, that that that's proved, right? But it's not just a rectangle; it's a rectangle with a diagonal being a bisector of angles, which means it's a rhombus, and rhombus and a rectangle is a square. So that what makes all these sides the same. So both casualty are the same. And from, from the Pythagorean theorem, R, A squared plus A squared is equal to C squared, which means C is equal to, this is 2A squared, square root from both, A square root of 2. Which means that sine of 45 degrees equals A over A square root of 2, right? 45 degrees opposite to hypotenuse which means 1 over square root of 2 or square root of 2 over 2. I just multiply by square root of 2, both numerator and denominator, getting 2 uh, in denominator and uh, square root of 2 in numerator. All right, so now obviously cosine of 45 degrees is exactly the same because the catheters is, this catheter is exactly the same as this catheter. So it's also square root of 2 over 2. And for the same reason, tangent of 45 degrees is equal to 1, because this catheter over this catheter, and they are the same, so the catheter over catheter will be 1. So these are three major function values for 45 degrees. Well, that's basically it for, for this particular triangle. So let's consider another triangle. Okay, another triangle is also very popular in geometry, is 30 degrees, 60 degrees. Now, why is it popular? Because it's simple. <laughs> now, um, we were actually talking about this um, in one of the geometry lectures, but basically you understand that I will flip it over this side. This is also 30 degree, right? I'll just flip it here. And this is 60. So I have 60, 60, 60. It's the equiangular, which is the same thing as equilateral um, triangle. So all three sides are equal. But since this is equal to this, this A, and this is also A, and this is equal to this, so this is A, and this is 2A, sorry. A plus A, it's 2A. And this is 2A, right? So, in this uh, right triangles, hypotenuse is twice as big as the smaller catheters, which lies across the 30 degree um, angle, which means that sine of 30 degree is equal to A over 2A, which is equal to 1 half. Now, and so is cosine of 60 degree, right? which is, again, this over this. Sine of 60 degrees is equal to, well, sine of 60 is opposite to 60 degree, which is this catalyst, towards this one. Now, if this is A, and this is 2A, then by the theorem of Pythagore, x squared plus a squared is equal to a squared so x squared plus a squared is equal to 4a squared. x squared is equal to a squared goes 
here it's this, so x is equal to a square root of 3. So this is a square root of 3. So this is a square root of 3 over 2a, which is equal to square root of 3 over 2. And so is uh, cosine of such a degree. And obviously, tangent of such a degree is equal to sine of 30 over cosine of 30, which is 1 half over square root of 3 over, so it's 1 over square root of 3, which is square root of 3 over 3, if I multiply by square root of 3 on both sides, and tangent of 60 is uh, sine of 60, which is this, over this, which is square root of 3. That's it. We have found all the values of cosines and uh, sines and cosines and tangents for 45 degrees and 30 degrees and 60 degrees. Uh, and that's basically it for right triangles. There is not much information which we can derive. This is a very simple case, and trigonometry of right triangles is really quite quite simple. Um, uh, should you remember these values? Um, personally, I never remember anything like that, but I do remember that in case of 30 degree, for instance, I just keep in mind this particular drawing, which signifies that the smaller catheters of uh, opposite to 30 degree um, acute angle is half of the hypotenuse. I do remember basically this uh, drawing and, and this property of the 30, 60, 30, 60 right triangle, and about 45 degrees triangle, right triangle. Obviously, again, it's uh, you, you have to understand that the catheter uh, is equal to another catheter, and from there, everything else, using the Pythagorean theorem, everything else can be derived. So my personal preference is to derive all these formulas, not to remember it. Well. Quite frankly, I, I, I've solved a substantial number of different problems which are related, and I actually do remember that sine of 30 degree is one half. But I don't really have to, because I definitely remember this drawing and the fact that in 30 degrees case, cajetus is smaller cajetus is half a hypotenuse. That's enough. Everything else can be derived. All right, so that's, this is the end of this particular lecture. Um, uh, try to um, derive yourself just using these drawings, basically, um, the uh, values of trigonom trigonom trigonometric functions uh, for these major angles, 30, 60, 45. Um, and uh, what I would also uh, think recommend you to do is to derive not only these three major functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, but also three others, cotangent, second, and cosecant, uh, just for practice. I mean, it's no big deal. And then you can check on the internet or, any, or anywhere else, actually, whether you're right or wrong. Uh, that's it. Thank you very much, and good luck.